Welcome to MSU Soccer Park in Montclair, New Jersey, the site for today's Match Week 5 MLS Next Pro Match to New York Red Bulls 2 and Chicago Fire FC 2. I'm Jack Edwards here with you in the broadcast booth for this one. An absolute pleasure to bring this one for you. Last year, when New York Red Bulls 2 hosted twice, once in the regular season and once in the postseason, we got some thrillers. Let's see where the teams enter into today at. Sitting on top of the table are the New York Red Bulls 2 with 11 points from their four matches so far in sixth place coming in. Our Chicago Fire FC with seven points from their three games. Both of them in the lead, undefeated to this point. A lot of excitement for both of these teams. When these sides met last year in the regular season, it was a 5-4 thriller and then a 4-1 thriller in the playoffs. These are the lineups first off for the hosts, Ibrahim Sakea leading the side as always. Three changes from a 1-0 win on Wednesday over their Hudson River Derby rivals, New York City FC. Up front, Roald Mitchell scored the winner for his fourth goal of the season last time out. He's joint league leading goal scorer currently. He'll be alongside Julian Hall up top at the back. Colohuaso, that being Jair Colohuaso, makes his second consecutive start. And Dylan Sullivan, a makeshift right back for this match after some injuries for Copeland, Berkeley, and Juan Mina have some limitations for the squad there. On the flip side, for Chicago Fire FC2, three changes for them from a 2-0 win over Crown Legacy at home on Wednesday. They're playing a 5-4-1 formation. Getting his first professional goal in the back line was Diego Koenigs. He'll continue to anchor that group and a bit of revenge potentially for David Pereba in the middle of the park. He's the captain for this side yet again. When he faced his former side Crown Legacy last time out, he got the second goal of the match, trying to add to his goal tally after he opened it up last time out on Wednesday. Unbeaten in five games are Chicago. And across six games this season, four wins, a draw, and a defeat. Last two games for New York, both of them against New York City FC2. The first one coming in the U.S. Open Cup second round. That was a 4-2 defeat. A thrilling game. They had right in that one, down 3-2. Had a penalty that was saved. Ended up going on to lose that one 4-2, but eight days later got some revenge in the league. Took that one, one goal to nil. In their second clean sheet of the young MLS Next Pro season in Chicago Fire. This is also their second match of this game week. That 2 0 win over Crown Legacy following up on their 2 0 win over Forward Madison of USL League One in the US Open Cup. Tease them up for a match against the Indy 11 from the USL Championship in the next round of the US Open Cup. The players have taken the field. Heading from left to right will be our visitors, Chicago Fire FC, from right to left in their red kits are the hosts, New York Red Bulls 2. Whistle is gone, we're underway. Mentioned those previous results last season in the Eastern Conference quarterfinals. New York Red Bulls 2 taking that one, four goals to one. And when they met in the regular season, it was a 5-4 match. So we've gotten five plus goals in the two home games, then conversely, the home match for Chicago last year finished in a nil-nil draw, went to penalties in a penalty shootout after the match, ended up finishing 3-0 in the shootout in favor of New York Red Bulls 2. That means that across their three matches in all competition since New York Red Bulls 2 joined MLS Next Pro last year, Chicago has never beaten them. We'll see if that changes here today on the road as they build this one up from the back. That one just off, out of play. Opportunity for the throw in, Omar Valencia. Tosses it, aiming for Julian Hall at the touch line. Goes out of play. Early goal kick in this match. Ludovic Tayet. Tayendie leading things for his third year at the helm of the MLS Next Pro side for Chicago. It's touchdown, Hall has Mitchell in the box. The pass takes a slight deflection, puts a hand up apologetically. Now Chicago trying to break forward with some numbers. Outside of the boot pass. One for Pereba to chase, but it's knocked out of play.
Kofi back to goal, rolls it off. Play attempted switch there. Valencia gets a foot in. Knocked up the field. Now Chicago can try and recycle, build from the back. Patrick Los trying to pick out Pereba in the middle of the park. Couldn't quite do so, but they'll pick up the second ball. And now Pereba, again, the target of a pass, just over hit slightly. Jair Colohuaso, his pass puts Julian Hall on his bike. He'll get there at the end line. Four in the box, there were options. Valencia from left back plays it across. Mentioned Dylan Sullivan playing a bit of out of position role for him in that right back position. Copeland Berkeley came off just before halftime ended as this is clipped into the box. It's dangerous and it's clipped over. Inventive work up front. Fantastic work on the ball over the top. And it looks to be rolled Mitchell again. Jair Colosso just a speculative ball over the top. And Rold Mitchell just stabs a toe at it, lifting it over Patrick Lowe. And he's got five goals in a very young MLS Next Pro season. Currently sat atop the Golden Boot race. What a start to the match for New York. That's the sign of a striker who's in all sorts of confidence right now. That one just overhit Valencia collects. Played off by Serwada. Referee will whistle for the foul. Free kick now for New York. Hall playing, this one down the channel. He'll slide just past the center back. Julian Hall into the box. Was that a foul in the box? It is, and a chance for an early double. Julian Hall hacked down. What a start for New York Red Bulls too. Another look at this one. Gets into the box. Diego Koenigs, did he get a foot in? May have fouled Hall before he got a foot on the ball. Referee, no hesitation, pointed to the spot. Now, Rold Mitchell already has one today. He scored from the spot on Wednesday as the decisive goal over NYCFC2. He's got five on the year. Chance to go to six. Rolled Mitchell will actually put that one more properly on the spot. Mitchell. Lowe's gets a hand to it, but it's too powerful. A brace within six minutes for Rolled Mitchell. A dream start for New York Red Bulls, too. He's got six goals in five games. He leads all scores in MLS Next Pro. The foul again. Koenigs bringing down Hall before he gets a foot in. And for the second consecutive match, Rold Mitchell putting home a penalty. You wondered if Lowe's was able to keep that one out. Got his hands to it, but it was just too powerful. How about this? Within six minutes, already on the double. Rold Mitchell on hat trick watch very early on. He's full of confidence. Had a great three-year career at Wake Forest. Made the choice after playing with Red Bulls 2 when they were in the championship, USL championship that is, and working in the academy level. Opted to go to the college game, get a college experience, play for three years at Wake Forest, get a degree. He's come back and been absolutely flying this year so far. Second brace of the campaign. Had one against FC Cincinnati on the road, including the winner in the 90th minute. Now he's got two within 10 here. 
We'll see if he can get a first professional hat trick. One to chase, Kolohaso touches that one last. Referee says that it's gonna bend out, corner kick given. And we talk about dream start for New York, conversely nightmarish for Chicago. We'll see what they can try and develop from this corner kick. Harold Osorio, the player over it. They're tossing some numbers up the field. Curled into the box. Dangerous and a good save by Rutkowski. Parries it away. They deal with that on the first shot on frame of the match by Chicago. Maybe a chance to break forward. That one just under hit from Malik Dembele. And look at the corner. Osorio putting it a dangerous ball into the box. The header right at Rutkowski. You'd expect him to make the save, but he does well to swat it away. to be seen what the response will look like from Chicago on the road going down two goals good strength shown Sirwata pushed out wide to the left hand side by Mitchell Valencia coming forward to offer him support Sullivan trying to thread a pass between some defenders Colohuaso will put the header back upfield Kofi good first touch he can play that off Omari Glasgow trying to find a teammate, but it was an important intervention from O'Connor. Malik Dembele now on the press. Sullivan stepping forward as well. Coffey in the box, rolls it off. Pareba rolls it off as well. Glasgow just can't quite catch that right. Positive signs from Chicago. Two good opportunities in the last five minutes to try and have the deficit. This one selfless by several players. Kofi lays it off, Pareba lays it off, and then Glasgow, you can see what he's trying to do, trying to just power that one, potentially to the bottom left corner, but just slightly mishits it, ends up going wide to the right. Big header by Hall, and it was illegally done so. Climbed over Jalen Shannon. Haven't mentioned yet Christopher Cups playing in the central center back role in this back three. Back five, if you want to call it that, making his professional debut for Chicago. Glasgow from the right hand side plays it across. Dangerous across frame. It's saved. The flag did go up. Wouldn't have counted if he scored it. He wondered if he had checked his run, but it appeared to be just ahead of the last defender. Frantic start through 10 minutes. You can see Pareba, looks like it's a good call by the assistant. O'Connor checking his run, just about perfectly done to make sure that Pareba was off sides. But again, Glasgow, good pick out to find the open man. And actually, let's give some credit to Rudkowski as well for staying big to make the save. Third start of 2024 in the league for the 17 year old in goal. Ibrahim Zakea. Puts the ball down, giving some instructions to his side. He'll be very happy with the start that they've seen. But they'll know. Harken back to their match against Inter Miami. Earlier this year at home, held a 3 to 1 lead. Ended up conceding twice late on, including in the 96th minute. That one finished in a 3 3 draw. They would get the Shootout win for the extra point, but definitely one point left on the table. Two goal leads, never for sure, and certainly so early on. Pareba. Intercepted. Glasgow. 
His pass stepped up to and won by Colohuaso and Mitchell off it in the option. Hall pushed a bit wide, but he's one on one with a debutant. Hall driving onto the right foot with speed, rolls it off. Serwata, he rolls it off as well. Important block put in. Sullivan just scoops it, trying to find Serwata back to Hall, and he gets that all wrong. You can see his frustration. He knows his quality is better than that. Ends up closer to Serwata than it was the goal. Those goals from Mitchell happening so quick in this match. Couldn't even mention the defensive strength that Chicago has shown so far this year. We'll touch back on that in a moment as Doncor takes it over. He's got the run from Dembele, but it's slightly overbooked, overcooked, and it goes out for a goal kick. In their first five matches in all competitions, Chicago had allowed just two goals, including clean sheets in the last two matches. Allowed just one goal against Philadelphia Union, just one goal against FC Cincinnati, the only goals they've conceded so far this year. In the league, they only conceded two, which was the best defensive record in the East. Joint fewest that had been anybody had conceded so far, but within six minutes, rolled Mitchell had scored two himself. Kofi trying to beat O'Connor with pace. O'Connor puts a good foot in. Concedes the throw, but deals with the immediate threat. Throw in now for the hosts. on. Rolled Mitchell trying to get that one across to Sirwata. They get past the initial wave of press Chicago do. And they've got some numbers going forward with a bit of momentum. O'Connor is touch a bit too heavy. Concedes the throw. This thing with New York Red Bulls too. Every team knows what they're going to try and do and that's play the ball quickly forward when they lose it. Try that immediate counter press. Great drop of the shoulder. Osorio, he keeps it in play. Valencia gets a foot to it to hack it out. Mitchell plays it to Dembele. Stays with it. Doncor, good turn. Colohuaso. Zerwada making life difficult. Los had to be careful under the press of Hall. Cups back. Great first touch by Pereba. Rochester rolls it out. Kofi back to Lamont Rochester. Fires it more towards goal than into the box. And Rutkowski was alert to it. Dealt with it. This portion of the match is brought to you by Hackensack Meridian Health. As Alan Rutkowski looks to launch this one back upfield. Rochester's pass under hit. Sullivan steps up to deal with it. Hall. Sullivan, Dembele, Doncor. Good use of the body by Doncor. He fires that one forward. Mitchell, flag stays down. Trying to put that one back in the box. They want a penalty. And again, for the second time this match already, they point to the spot and Rold Mitchell already has the ball in his hands. 
He earned the penalty. He's on the hat trick. Let's see this again and see if the handball verdict is the correct one. Certainly looks like it hits the hand. It's by the side of, looks to be, Diego Konix. For Old Mitchell, the chance for the hat trick. He puts it away. He had four entering today, joint best in the league. He's got three more within 18 minutes. A fantastic start for the New York Red Bulls. He's led them all year long, winner last time out, and now earns the penalty to try to put this one back in the box. Hits the hand of Christopher Cups, it looks like. Referee, no hesitation, points to the spot. Rold Mitchell goes the same side he went for the first penalty, and it's the same results. Los dove to his right, ball went to his left, and Rold Mitchell, a subdued celebration for a player who just scored his first professional hat trick. Glasgow. Outside of the boot ball goes to his opposite wing back, Rochester. Doncor takes this one over. Hall, big challenge put in. It's a step late, and the card will be brought out. It's the yellow card, our first of the match. That one going against Sergio Oriel Jr. You can see Hall just pokes it away. The challenge a step slow. Oriel. Booked. First player in our match booked. It's hard to believe this game's only 20 minutes gone. It's 3 0. All three from Rold Mitchell. Free kick now. Pushed forward, it'll spin awkwardly. That's gonna be a foul by Sirwada. It was a step slow after the ball was cleared up field. The senior teams for New York Red Bulls and Chicago Fire met yesterday in New York. That one finishing a nil-nil draw. Andres Reyes for New York was sent off in the first half and then finished in a scoreless draw. Julian Hall as well as Roald Mitchell were on the bench, unused substitutes for the first team. On the attack now, Chicago trying to find a way back into the game. It's played off, but they felt they got the ball there. It looked like it may have been clean, but call going against Chicago. Christian Kofi frustrated with the call against him there. Cups. Now centrally. Turned over, Sirwada, a few with him. First pass blocked. Couldn't quite find Mitchell again. Hall trying to scoop it back to Sirwada. Hall gets ahead to it again. All sorts of players in the box. Aiden Jarvis was also trying to just scrape that one along. Making his second start in the MLS Next Pro season, fourth overall appearance. 
scored his first pro goal in the Open Cup against Hudson Valley Hammers. That's a great threaded ball looking for Valencia. Glasgow will get there first and use his strength to see it out for the goal kick. And here's the thing, of course, a hat trick early on for Mitchell puts New York firmly in the driver's seat, but there is still well over an hour to be played in this one. Chicago has scored, has shown goal scoring abilities. Scored in every match so far this year, including six in the Open Cup. Passes intercepted. Those six coming against Chicago City SC. Solving the target, it's too heavy. This is certainly a case of just ruthlessness. From New York Red Bulls too. Absolutely lethal in front of goal so far. Six shots, three goals for the hosts. Switch. Rochester nods it down. Arihel. Big challenge put in by Sullivan. Referee says it was clean. It's back with Chicago. Pushed out wide. Glasgow, low dangerous ball. What a save by Rutkowski. It's a corner from point blank range. Rejects the shot from Christian Kofi. Keeps the clean sheet intact. He saw it have insurance, but he didn't want to use it. Sticks out that left leg. Wasn't a bad finish by Kofi. He'll want that one back, but Rutkowski stood tall. Second corner of the match now for Chicago. First one was quite profitable, the shot on target. That one goes through everybody. Now Omar Valencia. Got Malik Dembele and Julian Hall making a dangerous run. It's a fantastic ball and a fantastic challenge it looked to have been. This portion of the match brought to you by your Tri-State Audi dealers. And just to clarify there, I was waiting for confirmation just visually what was happening. It was pulled back for a foul when it was played by Valencia. It was a clean tackle on Hall, so obviously no, you know, denial of clear goal scoring opportunity for Chicago. It's just merely the foul after Valencia played the ball forward. Sirwata. He's been beaten by some pretty tough shots. Two penalties, always hard to save. Mitchell plays that one off. Jarvis. That one under hit. Doncor couldn't get to it. Glasgow is making the run. We want to avoid complacency setting in for New York Red Bulls, too. Job is nowhere near done. Chicago have shown some signs of life in the attack, even though they have been handedly beaten in the back a few times already today. Throw in now for Chicago. Spins for Hall. Back to Rutkowski. He had to be no nonsense with his ball forward. Kofi was right in his face, trying to make life difficult. Heavy touch. Javier Casas, the player, conceding possession. 
Casas, one of the players who started when these sides met in the playoffs in 2023. That one finishing a 4-1 win for New York Red Bulls too. And it's becoming a trend. When they met in the regular season last year, August 27th, 2023, finished 5-4, five goals for New York Red Bulls too, four for the visitors. When they met in the playoffs, four goals for New York Red Bulls too, just one for Chicago that time round. There's a foul from behind by Mitchell. And now we're ready today within a half hour. Three goals for New York across those three home games. 12 goals scored in two and about a third games played. Jarvis. Sirwata. Got on the loose ball, but it's poked out of his feet. Pareba, it's a great first touch. Good second one as well to evade a few in red. And he plays it off now, Casas. Glasgow, poor first touch. Mari Glasgow. Also started in that last match against New York Red Bulls, too, in the playoffs last year. It's a definite threat from that right wing back position. Kofi does well to play it off. Pereba trying to show off his speed. He's pulled down by Valencia. And that one would also produce a yellow card now. First one for a New York player today. And it goes the way of the left back from Panama. See, just Pareba had the beat, the beating of Valencia. Pulled him down. And now a chance on the set piece. Will Harold Osorio try and cook up with this? He's got Amari Glasgow coming over to offer some insight on what he may try and do or what they may try and do. in the wall, six in the box, curled back post, Rutkowski leaves it, goes through everybody. You can see they were trying to pick out the player at the back post, trying to maybe nod it back into the mixer as players broke off to make themselves options in the box, but that one just over hit by Osorio. And again, confirmation there, top left of your screen, the yellow card for Valencia. Has to be careful. The next hour of our match. He may be a contender to be brought off. That one, a poor pass, out of play. Sirwata, quick thinking with the throw. Gets it to Hall. He gets it past his opponent. More of a slip than anything else. Hall back to his feet with a noticeable limp on the left foot. We'll see if he tries to play through it or if he needs a moment to collect himself. It's out of play. Throw in. This portion of the match is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Important note for that moment just a moment ago for Julian Hall. Player goes down, needs treatment on the field. They'll have to come off for at least two minutes. Notably, that's for non head injuries, that wasn't a head injury for Hall. Didn't need treatment, so obviously not pertaining for him. We saw him challenge for that header, so back moving around. Just a slip to the ground. Doesn't look to be much more than that. Played Pareba. Mitchell gets his body into Pareba. Too much for the referee's liking. Commits the foul. And again, if you're just joining us, wondering how it's already 3-0. Well, it was 3-0 within 20 minutes, and all three were scored by one man, Rold Mitchell. 
a inventive clip over the keeper from a ball forward by Jair Coloasso. Then a penalty earned by Julian Hall that he scored. He earned a penalty himself, went on to score it. Foul committed by New York Red Bulls too. Chicago may have wanted that to be played on for advantage, but referee pulling it back for the free kick. Makes it seven goals now in five games. This MLS next pro season for Roald Mitchell. He entered the day, joint top of the league with goals. He has pushed himself quite far in front in that department now. Dembele. He's got Hall and Mitchell in the box. Sir Wada making a run into it as well. Jarvis. Dembele. Sir Wada, touch out of his feet. Sullivan making a great run, and it's a good ball to find him. Just loses his footing. That is, I think, the product of having, looks more of a natural left footer in Sullivan. In a right back roll, trying to put that on his left foot. Just couldn't quite get his feet right. Another foul going against New York Red Bulls, too. Wants a quick word with Sullivan. No extra action, just a discussion. Entering today, Mitchell was tied with Leo Afonso, Gino Vivi, Marlon Vargas as players atop the Golden Boot race. But he's left them in four and ran away with seven. Sirwada trying his pass, it's headed away. <laughs> Carrying it forward now. Glasgow making the run, the curler. It's just over frame. Referee actually will produce a yellow card for Dylan Sullivan. Played advantage, pulls it back, and that may be a follow-up to their earlier discussion. Shot just over the bar on the effort there by Sergio Orihel. Sullivan joins Valencia in the book. So both fullbacks now for New York are booked. Sergio Rihel also booked for Chicago. Reba. Foul from behind. Colohuaso moving over from his left center back roll. Committing the foul. Actually may have been a throw and given rather. Glasgow. Good foot put in by Sir Wada. Glasgow recovers to get their first goes all the way back. Patrick Los making his third start of the season. Los is in the MLS Next Pro campaign. Didn't start last time out against Crown Legacy. 
but he was the MLS Next Pro Goalkeeper of the Month for March, became the first Chicago Fire FC2 player to win a monthly Next Pro award, made 11 saves, including eight against Union, the Philadelphia Union, rather. Made a few penalty saves in their shootouts that led to some extra points being gained. Earned himself Goalkeeper of the Month shouts for March. Cups. He's fouled from behind by Mitchell. Big touch. Just rolls out. Tossed in, Kofi. Rolls it back. Rochester. This one's going to bounce out of play. Corner kick to come. Corner whipped into the box, just past a Chicago head. It bounces all the way through. The goal kick is the result. Set pieces, especially corners in particular, have been close for Chicago so far. Pareba just couldn't quite climb high enough to get his head to it. Good press high up the field. And Jarvis pulls down his opponent. He picks up the ball as well after. And I think quick word with the referee. No card given. Feels a little lucky to avoid that punishment considering the comparisons for the other yellow cards given out in this match so far. It's knotted down. Osorio, another foul given. That might have been on Sullivan, so he's got to be careful. They are up. Three goals nil, New York are, but they have a few players on yellows who are towing the line a little bit that they'll want to make sure they avoid going down a man unnecessarily, making this match a bit more challenging. Sullivan, you see him diving in and immediately pull his hands back. Don't think it's quite second yellow card worthy, but begin the tally of fouls post yellow for Dylan Sullivan. That right back roll is already a problematic one. Juan Mina, the usual starter there, hasn't been available the last two games. Copeland Berkeley started last time out, but he came off just before halftime with what looked to be a bit of muscle issue, likely a hamstring. Dylan Sullivan came on for him, despite being a midfielder by trade. And he has stayed there in today's match on a yellow card and a free kick now for Chicago. Whipped towards the near post. Sullivan gets ahead to it. He lets that run out of play, knowing it touched Glasgow last. Smart play. Less than five minutes until we hit halftime. Should clarify until we hit our stoppage time, rather. No word yet on how much we're expecting as it's flicked on. Dembele rolls it off. Jarvis moves it out. Here is Sullivan. Dembele making the underlapping run. Standing up against his opponent. It's good defending by Osorio. Works with Rochester to try and break through this press. Dembele and Hall making life difficult. That pass. Mitchell on the press gets a foot in. Mitchell been heavily involved in today's game, of course, with the hat trick already. about 16 shots across the year so far seven goals from it an almost impossible rate of shots to goals to keep up across an entire campaign but as of now he's currently breaking ahead of a goal a game so far impressively as well Leo Afonso 
Just two starts for him, four goals. He scored twice against New York Red Bulls, too. Moved out wide. On to the right foot now. Kofi, it'll sit up again, but O'Connor puts a foot in to push it away. Kofi will try and reset. Might have hit a hand. Referee did call it in the end. You can see him indicate that it was a handball. Certainly looked from our vantage point that Pareva cushioned that down with his right hand before his effort went over goal. Would have been a goal kick or a free kick, and the result will mean the ball will be kicked. Oh, just under 12 yards further forward. Switch of play. Back to the goalkeeper, Rutkowski. Had to get it right, he did with his head. Puts it out for a throw. Looking like we're gonna be at about four minutes of added time. Waiting for official confirmation once we hit that point. Just over a minute away from that, from distance. Rochester, always a tough one to try and get towards goal. Rutkowski not drawn into action. He did well after the awkward back pass to just put that one out of play. And this really feels like a point in the game for New York Red Bulls too where you have this very comfortable three goal lead don't do anything to hand Chicago a route back into the game make them have to work for their goals they've had some good movements Chicago have but they've been really hard to work for as they spray this one long rolled Mitchell he's already got three sits down one defender one on one he dances it through what a day it's turned out for him 44 minutes in He's got four goals, matching his season total already. Eight goals in 2024 for Roald Mitchell. Video game numbers, just a long ball over the top, one-on-one -on -one with cups, uses his strength to keep control of it, fakes the shot, and then just utter composure to draw the goalkeeper into the challenge and just dance it around him. Four for New York, four for Old Mitchell. And it's at a point where you feel like the only thing that's gonna stop him from scoring is if Ibrahim Sakea decides, let's give him some rest. All over the top. Colohuaso brings him down in the box, and that's a penalty for Chicago. Yellow card given as well for Colohuaso. You can hear some frustrations about maybe should have been a red card. Colohuaso definitely looks like he gets a lot of Pereba. That's in a spot where it feels like a double jeopardy if that happens outside the box. Red card, no penalty, but with penalty, just the yellow card rather than both. We were still having the announcement of the Rold Mitchell fourth goal when that one happened. And now, Harold Osorio. We'll see if Rutkowski can stand up. It's our third penalty of the match today. First for Chicago. Their best chance for a way back into the game. And it's buried. 4-1. Ronkowski guessed right, but just couldn't quite get to it. Harold Osorio, goal number two on the year. Here is the penalty again. Colohuaso just gets wrong side of the defender, or the attacker, I should say, brings him down. And a great penalty in the end. Lifts it and it's what he needed to do for his goal. Level one, one there. Level, let's go. 
4-1. Currently mirroring our score from the playoff match last fall. Doncor playing through the press. Now can Chicago try and find another? This game has been wide open at times. Bareba has the run from Glasgow, plays it. Colohuaso has to be careful. Another trip in the box. And it may have been a handball, actually. It is actually another penalty. Utter chaos. So Colohuaso is already on a yellow. Let's see the foul again. Just clips him there. Looked like it certainly was a coming together of legs. Referee took a moment to think about it and then did point to the spot. No yellow for Colohuaso, but he's probably on extraordinarily thin ice. Getting a sense of deja vu, it's because this happened just a moment ago, but at the spot again, Harold Osorio. That one also put away. Two penalties for both teams. Two goals scored from them. We'll see if we have another one before the half comes, but it's 4-2. They've had the deficit with two penalties if you're going down 4-0. Here it is again. Just looks like a coming together of legs by Glasgow and Colohuaso. And here is the penalty again. Goes the other way. Again, Rutkowski he guesses right, but again, the penalty very well placed. And here's Chicago. How much more time do we have in this half? Glasgow making the run, Rutkowski off his line. It was a good run and the ball just too heavy. We've hit the minimum of four, but we have had two penalties during halftime, before halftime's hit. So we'll see if any more is added on by our head official. Rutkowski goes long. Jarvis. Sir Wada's touch too heavy. Rochester, one for Kofi to chase. O'Connor, great strength shown by the center back. Sees this one out. It's a goal kick. They've hit the 50th minute. And that will be enough for the referee. Rutkowski pounds the ball into the ground because just four minutes ago, his side were up four goals to nil. But our score at the half, remarkably, New York Red Bulls two with four, Chicago Fire FC with two. We'll try and catch our breath at halftime, but halftime is coming up after we check in with the Generation Adidas Cup. We crowd a champion in the U15 division, and James Hadnot can tell us some more. Today, we crown a champion on the campus of IMG Academy at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup U15s. Valencia, Toulouse, and Mark makes it happen as he's done all tournament. But it's a spacing before he gets on the ball. It's Santi who comes central, and it's Mark that breaks the line with his run. The way he just opens up his hips, so clean, so classy, 1-0 Valencia. And then insurance always necessary in a final. Stepping up is Amadou. What a strike. As Jay requires so much attention, he plays it right into the path of his number nine. There's information on it. He needs to hit it first time. Just ropes this thing in the top quarter. That's two goals for Valencia. And more importantly, they are your U15 GA Cup champions. Valencia victorious. The final 2-0 over to lose. Valencia, the champions in the U15 side. Well, the U17 championship match came down to a shootout. David Goss has the details on that. 
You couldn't ask for a better final here at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup. The clear two best teams, a clash of titans, a clash of styles at the Philadelphia Union against the LA Galaxy. Diego Rossio gets the scoring started once again for the third straight game. Fantastic technique from Rosio to let this thing come across, but it's a reaction from the Galaxy. As Miller goes by line, the space is the cutback. Clever run from Moreno. Get it on target, you give yourself a chance from Vanny. It's an uh-oh moment for Atkinson, but it's 1-1 at this point in time. Dylan Vanny equalizes just two minutes later. Adam Dunbar gets on the end of this one, cannot finish. Mati Albert follows it up, and Dunbar with the go-ahead goal. There to clean it up, but Atkinson, you want to parry it wide and away from pressure. 2-1 LA Galaxy, but you knew the Union will never go down without a fight. First it's Sidey, then it's Johnson, and just watching the center of your screen, it's Sullivan. Johnson has the composure, the patience to let this play develop and the ongoing run to advance yourself as a midfielder is so important for Sal Sullivan. Little dance from Johnson. Thank you very much. 2-2, David Goss. Gavin Sullivan equalizes, but regulation was not enough to get between these two teams and we went to a shootout. Atkinson with the massive save to keep his team alive. Neil Pierre scores it in the sixth round. Securis puts it over and back-to-back -back GA Cup championships for the Philadelphia Union. Well, we talk a lot about the path for the players through the MLS system, but the path for the coaches it's equally as important. We can meet Erin Ridley and her journey into MLS coaching in San Jose. Okay, uh, my name is Erin Lycan Ridley and I'm the head coach of the U15 boys here at the San Jose Earthquakes. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee originally. Uh, I was a multi-sport athlete. I played uh, soccer, of course. I played softball, basketball, tennis, swimming, cross-country track. Um, so a lot of different sports, but fell in love with soccer, and that was the one for me. Like so many kids, Erin's introduction to the game came through family. I started playing soccer at the age of 11, and my brother and I joked because my mom signed him up first, and he's younger than me, and of course I couldn't let my younger brother do anything competitively that he was doing that I wasn't doing. In 1994, the United States hosted the Men's World Cup, which boosted the popularity of soccer around the country. It wasn't long after that that we had the 1994 World Cup here in the United States, and I was completely captivated. I was 11 years old for the 94 World Cup, and um, definitely fell in love with the U.S. team at that point and followed the game ever since. Erin played as a goalkeeper, falling in love with the position early. She attended the University of Virginia, where she was part of the number one recruiting class in the country. Unfortunately, during her time in Charlottesville, Erin suffered numerous injuries, which steered her in the direction of becoming a coach. I was really lucky that I went right into college coaching after I was done with, with playing, and, and I fell in love with it for its own sake. Coaching would lead Erin back to her hometown, where she would coach the women's team of one of MLS Next Pro's newest clubs, Chattanooga FC. So I was the head coach of the Chattanooga FC women, which is in the WPSL. And that was an incredible experience for me. One, because that's home for me, Chattanooga's home. So it kind of felt full circle coming back. My first impression of her was was that she, um, first of all, knew the game very well at a super high level. Um, even back then, that, that, was, that was super clear. My husband and I moved back to my hometown to help me recover, and I was really lucky to get into that community and become the head coach there. And the first year was really challenging. It was all local players. I had been uh, coming back from this, this brain injury and only had gotten back on the field in time to get open tryouts. And they were the most amazing, bought-in, hardworking women. And I had players from 16 to 32. I had young mothers on the team. I had high school players on the team. I think we won one game that year. And that set the foundation for the next year. And the following year, we had not only the support of community, the Chattahooligans there are incredible, um, but we had, I was able to recruit nationally and we brought in top players and we were able to make an incredible run and put together, but it started with that first year and this like spark and love of the game. And one of my favorite parts about that is how many of those women have continued to play, they extended their careers or even that they're now coaching. And I think that's a huge mark of success from, from that time. She expects a, a lot out of her players. She expects a, a super high level of, of commitment and work rate and all those great you know, qualities that you'd expect in a strong player, but um, 
But at the end of the day, like there's there's compassion there to where the players knew, they always knew that she cared about their best interests. Um, so even when she pushed them, um, it, it was from the right place and everybody always knew that. Erin also coached at Baylor School, a boarding school in Chattanooga. While on staff at Baylor School, Erin coached Darrell's oldest daughter, Zoe. As a parent, what you know, whether your your kids in athletics or not, you want them to be around teachers and coaches who who care for them as human beings first. Um, I don't think anybody puts their kid in sports for any other reason than to have them mentored and, and nurtured. And, and I, I saw that as a parent. Um, it you know, Aaron is the kind of coach that, that you want your your kid to play for. Um, and then on the professional side, she's the kind of coach you want involved in your organization because of everything that she stands for. Her level of excellence that she expects of, you know, not only her players, but of herself. She's constantly been growing. You've seen that in, her, in the way her career has evolved. Erin's time at Chattanooga FC is remembered fondly for her impact on and off the pitch. A coach of her pedigree will always draw the attention of U.S. soccer. In 2018, the U.S. U-17 girls national team was preparing for the World Cup and Erin was asked to help out. During that time, she met Luciano Fusco, a member of the Quakes organization, and Andreas Deza. Andres was the girls director at the time and uh, had worked with Luciano for a long time. Um, and they were in a transition moment where Luciano was actually being, um, he was being pulled into the boys' side. And when we were on the trip in South Korea, Andres had mentioned that he needed a coach and um, he wanted me to come check things out. And I, my husband and I flew out and we were really blown away by our visit that we had here. And it was, it was amazing. So I came in, I was named the U19 head coach. Uh, I also took over the U-17s and I was also doing the goalkeepers as well and it was a really special environment. We had so many top players in that group. We won a national championship with the 15s. We were the, you, we were the coach of the, you know, staff of the year uh, for the DA on the west, west side. I think it's been a really unique experience being the first female head coach for the MLS platform. Like that is, that is something that I really am humbled by and I don't take for granted ever. Having the opportunity here at the Quakes to coach at a high level on the women's side and then come in and coach at a high level on the men's side um, has been really special to me. While inspiring others isn't what Erin set out to do when she began her coaching journey, her path has made her an inspiration to many. Hopefully women see what I've been able to do and feel like they belong here and that they um, they, they see themselves there as well. And, and not only that, but that the young men that I coach also see that as normal as well. And I have a great relationship with the guys that I coach here and I'm, I'm very, very proud of them. And it's very rewarding to be their coach. I was really struck by a conversation I had with a parent that said, look, it's so important. You always hear as a woman, it's so important for women to hear, to see women, to see it, to be it but I had a parent in Chattanooga, Tennessee tell me, it's so important for my son to see you. And I, I never forgot that. It really changed the way I looked at things is that not only is it important for women to see uh, other women doing things that they aspire to do, but it is important for young men to see that. And I take that responsibility very seriously as well. Erin is vocal about more opportunities being afforded to women in sports. I think the landscape has changed in that there are certainly more professional opportunities for women across the board. The, the level of professionalism on the women's side has been increasing exponentially over the last 20 years and we're seeing huge gains from the way that women can use the platform to um, make a career out of playing and then make a career out of coaching. And we're seeing um, how normal it is to see female referees uh, taking the lead. We're seeing um, female strength coaches and female nutritionists, uh, analysts, we're seeing lots more women involved in staffs. I would say that if you love the game, that there's a place for you. And when it comes to coaching, it's about giving back. I think that one of the, my favorite parts of coaching is that I know what was transmitted to me and the passion that the people that I worked with, that they had for the game, and I know what it added to my love of the game. And I hope that I can continue to pass that on. So my message to women is that they belong on the sideline, they belong in the game, and that they have a voice that is valuable. And, and, and I think too often when they don't see themselves there, it's easy to tell themselves that it's too much work or they probably wouldn't be welcome there anyway. And, and that's just not true. And that they have the power to, to write their own story and to be part of something that um, they get to set the path towards. And uh, whether it's coaching boys or girls, men or women, 
uh, you know, I think that the most important thing that women can see is just to get started. If they love something, if they have a passion for it, there is a place for them. Great stuff there with Aaron Ridley. We are back now with our schedule. Looking ahead as well for Monday. We got one game on this upcoming Monday here, match week five, Atlanta United two, to get on Philadelphia Union two. It was a shootout yesterday and Saturday between Huntsville and Crown Legacy. So as you can see, our games from last Wednesday, Crown Legacy falling to Chicago Fire FC two, and New York taking the one nil win in the Hudson River Derby. Well, get ready. We have highlights. There was a lot. We got six combined goals from that first 45 minutes. Four of them by one man. Let's see the first one put in here. Jair Colohaso, he was heavily involved too. Good ball forward and just a fantastic flick. He lofts it over the goalkeeper. We can't even show you it again. We got to go to the next one. Into the box, Julian Hall goes. He's brought down. Referee points to the spot. Diego Koenig's the player committing the foul. Rolled Mitchell scored a penalty Wednesday. He scores a penalty today. Keeper gets his hand to it, but it goes in. He's on the brace. That's within six minutes of this game. Now, ball again into the box. One-on-one -on -one out wide. Puts the ball in, and it's an unfortunate one there for Christopher Cups. It hits his hand. It's a penalty, and Mitchell, part two, Puts that one same side, same result. He's got a hat trick. And you're saying, all right, the hat trick, he's done for the day. No, he's not. Long ball forward by the other center back, O'Connor. He's one-on-one -on -one with Cups again. Sits him down with the fake shot. Lowe's comes out to try and grab it. Flip-flap around him. Puts that one home. Makes it 4-0. Then Colohuaso had an assist, but that one a penalty. Yellow card. Put home there by Harold Osorio, makes it 4-1. That's in first half stoppage time. This is also in first half stoppage time. Colohuaso again gets caught wrong side of the defender, or the attacker, I should say. And again, Osorio, a fantastic penalty. And all of a sudden, this match is four goals to two. We can look now at our first half stats. 11 shots for Chicago to the seven of New York who have been utterly clinical in front of goal. Rold Mitchell had four goals entering today, has four goals today. The pass accuracy also, they've been going direct New York have. Just 73% of their passes have actually found their intended target. And the fouls, it's been a bit chippy at times. Three yellow cards all along that New York Red Bulls two back line. One for both fullbacks, Omar Valencia and Dylan Sullivan as well as Jair Colovaso, who avoided the second yellow card on his second penalty. So it is still 11 v 11, and it's 4 v 2 in terms of the scoreboard. Two for Harold Osorio, four for Rold Mitchell. It's unbelievable, the game that we've had so far between these two sides. And it's completely consistent with what we've seen in these home games for New York Red Bulls 2 against Chicago Fire 2 in the last two times it happened last year. That regular season game was five goals to four. It finished in favor of New York Red Bulls too. We're really on track for that to happen again if this one continues to hold. And the, uh, in the playoffs, they met again. It was a home game for New York Red Bulls too after they finished in fourth place in the East. And they took that one four goals to one. So it is now three consecutive times at home. The last three times these teams have played, New York has scored four goals against their opponents. And you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, two subs apparent. Coming into the game, Bento Estrella, as well as Juan Gutierrez. We have not seen Jair Colohuaso come back in. So trio of changes to inform you of. Juan Gutierrez, Ibrahim Casule, Bento Estrella coming in. Coming out of the game, Aiden Jarvis, Jair Colohuaso, Malik Dembele. And those three subs all being made by the team that are in front in New York Red Bulls too. Definitely an indicator that they saw the writing on the wall with those last few moments of that first 45. But this match can flip in just a moment. It took only the first half stoppage time for the lead to be cut in half. Christopher Cups coming out in place of Billy Hensey. And we are back underway. 
We'll see if we've got six more goals in us in the second 45 or if we'll cool down to a more natural three goals or something like that. We'll see what ends up breaking out. I'm Jack Edwards with you, having a ton of fun here as New York Red Bulls 2 are taking on Chicago Fire FC 2. And the Red Kits heading from left to right are New York in the lead and Chicago in the whites as a foul is committed by the new entrant by Juan Gutierrez. Heading from right to left will be the visitors, Chicago Fire. Alejo Colume has had his work cut out for him so far. He's called four penalties. You see the subs begin to filter in. Top left of your screen, Ibrahim Kasule. He may want to try and get back in on the action. In his last two games against Chicago Fire FC2, he has scored braces in both of them. He was leading scorer in 2023 for New York Red Bulls 2 with 15 goals. Roald Mitchell is going to make the task for him to repeat his position as lead goal scorer very difficult. He's got eight goals on the year now, twice as many as any other player in MLS Next Pro. And just to reiterate a point that I will probably hit another several times this game, he has scored four goals today. That is not normal. You also see Hensi coming in. He was the leading goal scorer in 2023 for Chicago Fire, and that's a foul committed by Sullivan. Again, Sullivan on the yellow card, as is Valencia. And they've stayed on the field. So something to watch out for in these wide areas. We'll see how the wing backs continue to try and impact things. Played off. Dangerous ball into the box. Now it's left across frame just behind Serwata trying to carry this one out. And he will do that successfully and plays it into Bento Estrella. Coming off his first start for the club this season. Big tackle put in, both players ended up on the ground, but Estrella back to his feet. Again, has it taken off of him, and again, does not get the foul call he wanted, but it'll bounce again to the 91. He plays it off to Sullivan. Mentioned this in the first half, as we'll get back to that in a moment, Ibrahim Kasule, head towards goal, always a threat. Serwata from distance goes just over. We've mentioned the yellow card for Sullivan and the subsequent fouls that haven't been committed by him since then. As we see again, just Sirwata giving a bit of space to shoot, letting that one fly. He is more or less the third choice right back. He usually plays as a midfielder. He captained the side in their win over Hudson Valley Hammers in the U.S. Open Cup. But he's playing as a right back in the absence of Copeland Berkeley and Juan Mina as Sirwata takes over, rolls it. Kasule, Kasule's shot, takes a deflection. Sirwata will run and chase it down. Puts it back in. And that one may have been frame or hand of the goalkeeper or a combination of the two. It's put away. Doncor in the box, rolls it off. Kasule drags it just wide. Queuing up, New York are trying to add to their tally of four. Serwata. That one definitely hitting the hand of Patrick Lose, just making sure he gets something to it to push it away. Trying to generate the angle, Serwata. Serwata's ball in, and then Kasule dragging that one wide. Ibrahim Kasule was named the Player of the Month across MLS and X Pro for the month of March. Third time he was a Player of the Month recipient. That's a league record in that department. Coming off a year where he had 15 goals and five assists, he's got two goals and two assists today. He made his first start since injury against Inter Miami last time out against New York City FC2. Comes off the bench here today at halftime, try and see out the result. Dropped forward, O'Connor. Got the first touch to it, but he's turned here by Kofi. Into the box, has to be careful. Referee does point to the spot, took a moment to think about it. And it's the third penalty for Chicago, the fifth of the match. O'Connor is frustrated. Let's see if it's justified. Certainly looks like he gets too much of the man there who gets across him. And that is almost a carbon copy to four of our five penalties that we've had so far. Harold Osorio, he's standing over this one. He is on a hat trick. He's already got two from the spot. Osorio stutters, and that's a beautiful penalty for three. This game is right in it. 
4-3. Rutkowski trying to hold on to the ball, and there's a little bit of frustration after the fact. Osorio has a hat trick, joins Rold Mitchell in that department. Let's see what caused it again. The penalty, Coffey into the box, fouled from behind by O'Connor. And then the penalty again. Brilliant, brilliant penalty. Every time Rutkowski's guessed the right way. It's going to be a yellow card given now. Osorio booked. So a goal and a yellow card for Harold Osorio. It's New York four, Chicago three, Rolled Mitchell four, Harold Osorio three. And we're back underway. Your attention, please. A yellow card has been assessed to Chicago Fire. Q number 45, Harold Osorio in the first Estrella rolls it off. We'll receive it again, flicks it on. Kasule. Chicago Fire, two goal, scored in the One for Sirwata to chase. Throw in. Rochester brings it down, plays it off. Osorio back. Headed forward, rolled Mitchell. Looking for his fifth. Can he just power it through? It's cleared away. And now a chance on the break. You can see the run being made by Kofi. Glasgow, can he pick him out? Hesitates, two and red around him. Glasgow steps past, lasers one towards goal, and Rutkowski parries it away. All of a sudden, momentum swinging in the way of the visitors who currently have scored three goals unanswered. Again, Glasgow just does well to escape Valencia, who's on a yellow, has to be careful. Another corner, Chicago, curled in. Rutkowski will claim an easy one. Again, at the half, there were three subs made by New York Red Bulls, two, one made by Chicago. Fire FC, two. Still some more bullets in the chamber for both teams, so to speak, if they want to try and make some more tweaks. That one just never went in play. So we'll do it again. Billy Hensey was the substitute at halftime coming on for Christopher Cups. A challenging environment to make your professional debut in against the talents of Julian Hall as well as Roald Mitchell who has four goals. He was guilty for one of the penalties. One on one was put down by Mitchell on another event. Sorio throws it back in. So we've got two players on hat tricks. I'll admit, I don't know if there is a technical term for four goals in a game. Rold Mitchell might really test the dictionaries if there's a term for five goals in a game. He's been sniffing around goal as well. As that one goes out of play, Rutkowski will get a fresh ball and get us going again with the goal kick. Sports of the Match brought to you by Hackensack Meridian Health. This is just knocked forward upfield. Hall, 1-2 with Kasule. Outside of the boot pass is brilliant to pick out Sirwata. They wanted a handball. Would have been harsh to give. It's not given. Osorio. Now one to chase. Valencia has to be careful. Glasgow, did he foul? He did. And 
Omar Valencia. Tough tumble for him. He'll be helped back up by his opposing full back. You'll see just a slight push in the back and then lands back on top of Valencia. Painful one for the Panamanian. Moving a little slowly, but he'll be able to continue. To go long, Sirwada on the turn. One, two between Mitchell. Big challenge put in, he got it right. He's gonna spin away. Jalen Shannon, the player, last to touch it. Chicago on the attack, looking for their equalizer. A phrase that would have been utterly foreign just 15 minutes of in-game time ago. Glasgow, he gets that one into the box. It's headed away, Osorio. He's looking for four himself. Mitchell on the break, plays one for Hall. Hall gets there first, brushes off the defender, plays it across, back to Mitchell. It's a heavy touch. Rolled Mitchell is down in some discomfort. See it again, Julian Hall, one on one. You can see Rold Mitchell, left hand side of your screen, makes the run, gets to it, and then just goes down. Not a ton of, well, no contact there. Getting treatment. And on a day when he has scored four goals to move his season tally to eight, they're hopeful that this one not serious. Again, Rold Mitchell getting attention looked at. Looks to be his left leg. There will be a sub being made by Chicago in the meantime. Jason Shukaluk will be coming on for Sergio Orihel Jr. Sergio 
And Roald Mitchell being helped off the field. Just heartbreaking after four goals today. It's not the way he should be walking off the field. It should be a triumphant performance. Definitely looked uncomfortable right when he tried to take that ball down and in quite a deal of discomfort. Abe Konings giving him a, a bit of support with just the pat there, but definitely not going to be able to continue here. Rafael Mosquera will be coming on in place of Roald Mitchell with four goals. Mosquera making his first appearance in the MLS Next Pro this year. Had eight appearances, seven of those being off the bench in 2023. Your attention, please. Substitution for your New York Red Bulls, two. Entering the match, number 79, Rafael Mosquera. Exiting the match, number 33, Roald Mitchell. Substitution occurred in the 61st minute. Controlled. Switched. Mosquera. Early pressure since coming on. Here's Sullivan. Sullivan continuing the challenge, slides it forward, Hall is going to go through. Sullivan steps up, intercepts. Kasule rolls it off. Mosquera slides it back, trying to go back to Kasule, but taken over now by Doncor. Serwata would have been one-on-one -on -one if not for a very good tackle by Rochester. Kofi, good footwork. Chicago, Glasgow, slides this one across. Glasgow from distance, oh, that one just wide, almost a wonder strike to equalize us after Pereba laid it off to him. Omari Glasgow trying to get goal number two. First time, that one is not far away at all. This portion of the match brought to you by your Tri-State Audi dealers. As Chicago Fire 2 get us back rolling. Throw in now, New York Red Bulls 2. This game has cooled down to a less frenetic goal scoring rate than it had in that first 45. Julian Hall feeling the effects of that challenge there and that actually will be a foul. He was feeling his head after he ducked in to try and flick it on.
Doncor rolls it off, Kasule. They'll go all the way back, reset things to Rutkowski. Glasgow was making life difficult. Was flicked on. Flag will go up though. It was almost too good to be true for Julian Hall. That's because it was too good to be true. It was offsides. Playing through the press by Chicago. Hensi turns, plays it across. That one's under hit though. Sullivan steps up onto it. It's a fantastically weighted ball. Will it come to Hall? Doesn't quite. Important tracking back. Kofi, back. Shook a look since coming on. One of his first touches. Glasgow, he's been in the danger all through the day. Picks out Shukaluk. He squeezes this one through, one on one. Rutkowski saves and falls on it. Keeps his side in front. Now Doncor. Rolls it off, Kasule. We'll show you that save again when the ball goes out of play again, as Sullivan has it. Estrella. Put under pressure, but he evades the man on the hat trick, who has a hat trick, I should say, for Osorio. Kasule. Slides it out wide. A cross goal, and it's unfortunate. It's an own goal. Great ball into the box by Steven Serwata. It ends up in the back of the net. Diego Koenigs, the last one to touch it. And they've got a two goal lead again, New York do. Maybe not the way they drew it up, but they count all the same. They've got five goals. Kasule, good ball out to Sirwada, first time. And in Koenig's defense there, if it's not him getting a touch on it, it's likely Julian Hall behind him. Just couldn't quite steer that one simultaneously away from Hall as well as his goal. Really inventive pass out of the kickoff. Glasgow trying to pick out Shukaluk. It goes over his head. And it's well left out of play. Will be a goal kick. That was our eighth goal of the match today. Interestingly, only our third from open play. Five penalties have helped define this game. All of them scored. I think that's definitely a product of just the draws going to shootouts where players in the next pro system have just a wealth of experience taking penalties played through try and get it to hall it will get all the way to the striker he's got a few runners with him he was trying to pick one of them out kasule will pick up the loose one sirwada good first touch rolls it off Doncor sits down two towards goal they block it valiantly chicago do now kofi Sullivan tosses it in. Hall. Blocked. Good foot put in by Sirwada. Kasule just taken off of it. Pareba trying to squeeze free. Ball was gotten. A lot of numbers forward now. Estrella rolls it. Julian Hall buries it, but the flag goes up. A fantastic finish from the 16-year-old. Let's flash back to that really quick while we have the chance. Estrella slides it in for a haul. It's certainly close. It's a fantastic finish. Instinctive from him. Curtis Ofori 
coming in for Omar Valencia. Omar Valencia, first player was booked in today's match. Curtis Afori. In his first league appearance this season. He'll be coming on, tasked with playing in that left-hand side. Omari Glasgow will be the subject of his interests. Hall trying to flick it on. Comes now Kasule, trying to squeeze it through with Hall. Knocked out of play. This portion of the match is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Do Chicago Fire FC have a few more goals in them to try and get a result for the first time on the road against New York Red Bulls 2. They've never beaten them. It's a long road back to that point. That score would be utterly comical if that's how today ended. Great flick. Kofi. Pareba, back. Good drop of the shoulder. Lots of space for Pareba. It's a brilliant finish. Back-to-back -back goals for the captain. The seas parted through the middle, and David Pareba has got two for his new side. And again, they have have the deficit. They're right back in this game. Great find, great run. Good first touch, brilliant second touch to place that one under Rutkowski. And again, this game is right back up in the balance. There was a yellow card given in the aftermath of that goal. May have been for Rutkowski for grabbing it again and avoiding the quick restart as it's put out of play there. Taken quick, shook a look with the target, but alert there was Gutierrez. Scratch that yellow, nothing was given. Kofi, it's flicked on. There was a foul though, and a coming together between Estrella and Kofi results in a free kick. We somehow still have over 15 minutes to go in this one. It's utterly bonkers, considering the amount of goals we've had. Whipped forward, now one takes an awkward bounce for Billy Hensey, who had his first assist of the season, picking out Pareba. Let's just recap how we got to this point. It was a hat trick within 20 minutes for Roald Mitchell, and then he made it four goals in the first half, just in the doorstep of stoppage time. They were up four goals to nil, but then there were two penalties, both given in favor of Chicago, two fouls from Jair Coloasso, both penalties dispatched by Harold Osorio. Made it 4-2 entering the break. Then, other side of halftime, we had another penalty for Chicago Fire. Another penalty scored by Osorio. That one made it four goals to three. Then we had a Steven Serwata ball into the box. Takes a deflection. Goes in for an own goal. Last touching, Diego Konings. And then just a moment ago, the first goal from open play on the day for Chicago. It was scored by Pareba on a great feed from Hensi. Nine goals in 74 minutes. And just looking ahead, set a reminder, you're not going to want to miss Red Bull 2's next game on April 21st when they head down I-95 to Chester, Pennsylvania and a date with Union 2. Coverage will be on MLS Season Pass beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. Pushed out wide. Kofi, pass two. Maybe a look at goal for him. Rolls into the box for Rochester. His shot is blocked. O'Connor will finish the job and come over. It was Gutierrez, rather. His ball slightly under hit, but Serwata helps his teammate out. Picks out the open man. No foul against Hensi. 
Glasgow. He had the run from Hensi, but it's blocked out of play. Ball over the top, Kofi. He gets there, one on one. Kofi on the right foot, fires it across goal, through everybody. Hensi busting a lung to get there. Rolls it off, Omari Glasgow whips it into the box. Headed away by Gutierrez, brought down by Serwada. Kofi, on to the right foot, slides it off. Pereba already has one, it's blocked. It sits up and it's just wide of goal. Glasgow inches away from the equalizer. Another look here. Christian Kofi just carrying it forward slowly, takes a deflection. Before he didn't really have a ton of idea where that ball was deflecting to. Not on his preferred right foot for Glasgow. But he will want that one back. Goes out of play, it'll be a throw in. Up next for Fire FC2 is a date with expansion side Carolina Core. Kickoff from the Windy City is April 22nd at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on MLS Season Pass. Slid forward. Hall pushing forward. Was he tugged down? He was. It's a free kick in a dangerous position. A chance to go for goal potentially on this one. Free kick and a replay again. Hall gets ahead of Glasgow. Slight tug. They didn't feel it was a foul, Chicago do, but you seldom do when a call goes against you. Two over the free kick. The left-footed effort is saved. Well dealt with. Mosquera trying to get his first for New York Red Bulls, too. It's saved, though, by Patrick Los. Flicked on. Pereba. He got it! It's 5-5! David Pereba with a brace himself. They were down 4-0 in the first half. They've come back on the road, and it's 5-5. Flicked on, really well done. And Pereba, first time finish, puts it in the bottom left corner. It's been a treat this match so far. Coming in now, Romain Blake coming on for Javier Casas. He started last time out as the defensive midfielder in a 4-1-3-2 shape. And all of a sudden, we're back to square one. We're back to level pegging. 
Both teams have had ample experience taking penalties in this match so far, but Rold Mitchell, who took both of the penalties for New York Red Bulls too, went off with injury after scoring four goals for his side. Glasgow. All of a sudden, they're looking for a winner now, Chicago are. Doncor, rather, big time challenge put in on Ofori. over the top. O'Connor comes across, gets ahead of Kofi. He'll keep it in play, play it forward, Estrella. Hall, was he pulled down from behind? Referee does take a moment, but then does blow his whistle. Blows for the foul against Diego Koenigs. Sirwata rolls it back. Sullivan. Turn past Doncor. Referee is going to stop play. Wants to free kick from the original position. Looks like Doncor will escape a yellow card, though. down. Pereba, who, by the way, on a hat-trick, looking for his third. It's played to the man who has a hat-trick. Osorio steps past. Rochester, he curls this one in. It's headed away, knotted down. Osorio had three from the spot today so far. Big time challenge put in, rolled away, Estrella. That one too heavy for Sir Wad. It will roll out, throw in. We have to credit, I think, I got to give some credit to the response of Chicago. You go down 3 0 on the road within 20 minutes. You go down 2 0 within six minutes, and you still manage to come back, of course, with the help from some penalties. But they put themselves in those spots. They could have been knocked out. It was a knockout punch, but they have a chance to try and push this one on. Kofi into the box. Shook a look, couldn't keep that on frame. They've come from 4-0 down to a spot where they're in the control of this match, trying to find the winner. Kofi aiming for Shukuluk, his shot just too strong. Looking for his first goal since coming out of Akron. The 2023 Big East Offensive Player of the Year. 26 goals, 17 assists across his four years at Akron. He was the 35th pick in the 2024 MLS Super Draft. Played forward, great flick down. Some numbers forward, that one's just too heavy for Coffee. He's put in a fantastic shift today, but you can see how tired he is. Too late. Too late. 
This is the first home game for New York since a 3-3 draw with Inter Miami 2 back on March 24th. Was a foul after the ball was played forward. It's going to be a yellow card there for Mosquera. Ready to go back underway after Mosquera was booked. Chested down. Asking a lot of Kofi to get there. He just can't quite. Throwing for New York. Or rather, throwing for. Chicago throw. On the third try, play will continue. Sirwata brings it down. Kofi was in the area trying to press. It's a long one forward. Julian Hall can press. Combination of headers by the defenders of Chicago and it ends up back with Los. Intercepted. Estrella, flicked on, Kasule, Estrella puts a challenge in as well, Sullivan, Sirwata, Hall left it, Mosqueda couldn't bring it under his control, and it's a goal kick now. Some stats for you, 23 shots for Chicago, 12 for New York. 20 fouls for New York, nine for Chicago. This match has been utterly bizarre. We still have some more in it. Currently poised for penalty shootouts to decide an extra point between the two sides. Estrella puts a foot in, knocked out, throw in. Glasgow. It's turned over. Sirwata, good header away. Kasule flicks it down. Estrella comes across, takes over. Kasule, good first time pass. Kofi skips past Sirwata. Kofi lost a shoe into the box. Trying to play that one across. It's blocked. Referee is pointing to the fact that he lost his shoe as reason for a foul not being called. Referee just points to the shoe and says, go get it. Whipped into the box. Rutkowski gets a fist to it and it's flicked on by Hall. Passes under hit, Sullivan intercepts. Very cynical tug back there by Kofi. Knows what he's doing, Sullivan 
thought he was able to sprint away. But it's a booking now for Kofi. Just hugs down Sullivan as he's in transition. Five minutes of added time. Sirwada also fouled. Just pure tired legs out there for both teams. They both exhausted so much. Currently poised for penalties. Lofted into the box, headed away. It's actually be offsides called. Pareba, three and a half minutes to see if either side takes the full three or if we'll have a shootout decide who gets two. Hensi, good dribbling, rolls it off, Pareba. Trying to get it out to Coffey, they will. Sullivan, great foot put in, and now Estrella. Big first touch, good second one. He's got a few ahead of him. Outside of the boot, leads this one on for Mosquera. Kasule with him. Sits up for Kasule. His back's to goal, and it's taken off of him. Now we head the other way. Great first touch by Kofi. Sirwada chasing him down. Players down left and right. See everybody, hands on hips, hands on knees. This game has been a tennis match, back and forth. Giovanni Granda, you can see him on the sideline, preparing to come on to the field. Granda started in the U.S. Open Cup win over Chicago City SC, but this is his first MLS Next Pro appearance. See just struggling there is Hensi. He'll be the player departing for Granda. That's a tough one because you might imagine Hensi would be a potential penalty taker. You want to pull back and actually mention just it was not Hensi who assisted the first Pareba goal. That was in fact Shukaluk. Exiting the match number 47, Billy Lofts it forward. Hey, 
Sullivan gets a foot in. Estrella, he's got four in red, streaking forward. Another from left back, Estrella. Rolls it, Kasule, out to the left. Mosquera was caught flat-footed, but he plays it now. Ofori, he passes behind Sullivan, but it does find Kasule. Estrella, Sirwada, tall pass. Ofori trying to keep it in play, he can't quite do that. It's out now. Now Bento Estrella is feeling the effects there. Multiple players are down. Long ball forward. Just about kept in. Headed out. Throw in. New York Red Bulls two. Lofted forward. Great challenges put in. Hall was he on side? Flag goes up. He was off. Estrella, his ball too short for Hall. That one also just a slightly under hit. O'Connor, Sirwada, plays this one for Sullivan. He's gonna get there, he keeps it in play. Mosquera, saved by Los, and we're headed to a shootout. We've already had five penalties in regulation. We've had 10 goals, one point aside, for each team, now we'll see who can get one extra in our shootout. We're going to take one quick break, and when we come back, it'll be the penalty shootout. All right, MLS store, I need something fresh and clean. Let's see what you got. I need that in my size. One point for New York Red Bulls 2. One point for Chicago Fire FC 2. After 10 goals, an utter thriller here in Montclair, New Jersey. And now we can see how we got here. How did we have those 10 goals? And we can flash back and see what we've seen so far in this. Lofted forward, Coloasso, great flick by Roald Mitchell. Gets it over the goalkeeper. That one made it 1-0. Just a few minutes later, Roald Mitchell makes it 2-0. That's goal number two for New York and for him. Then he'll do it again from the spot. Makes it 3-0. Three, three goals for him, three goals for New York. Aiden O'Connor looks up field, sees Rold Mitchell, says, all right, that's enough for me. I'll play it long. Rold Mitchell one-on-one -on -one with Cups, sits him down. Los has no chance, skips past him. That's four for New York. That's four for him. Then there'd be penalties. First half stoppage time penalty number one. First half stoppage time penalty number two for Harold Osorio. Then it's a 4-2 game now. This one is gonna take an awkward deflection, loops back into the goal. That one makes it 5-3. There was a penalty as well. Osorio here is gonna be able to bury this one. A brilliant penalty made it 4-3. That was 5-4 New York. Then there were still some more goals to come. Great ball here by Hensi. Picks out Pareba. He picks up the back of the net. That's 5-4. 
And then a long ball over the top. It's going to be headed back. It's going to be headed forward again. Flicked on brilliantly. Pereira making the run from deep. And that made it 5-5. Five, five. And now, Ibrahim Sakaya giving out his instructions for the shootout. There will be five takers for each team. Five takers. If you continue undecided after those first five penalties, you'll move on to a sudden death mode. Winner of this shootout will get themselves an extra point. Both of these teams have been in a penalty shootout already this year so far. It, you can also exclude the game already today from a penalty shootout consideration, even though there have been five penalties in the match. Three made by Osorio. He's still on the field. Two made by Mitchell. He came off with injury. Just a really tough scene for him. A non-contact one for him, hoping the absolute best for Rold Mitchell. Osorio will take first. Osorio made three today already. Rodkowski has plenty of experience there. They went to penalties at home against Inter-Miami 2. New York Red Bulls 2 did after conceding a two-goal deficit very, very late on. They won that shootout. As for Chicago Fire, they've gone to shootouts against both FC Cincinnati and Philadelphia Union. They won both of those shootouts as well. Both of these teams undefeated entering today on the season in MLS Next Pro and both undefeated in the shootouts they've had so far this year. Something has to give. Rutkowski against Osorio. Round four, and again, Osorio. Four penalties from four today. Opens up our shootout. Scores the first one for Chicago. Just about as automatic as you can ask a penalty taker to be today. Osorio has picked out corners, top and bottom. That one picking out the top left corner, making things 1-0 Chicago. Ibrahim Kasule, experience putting the ball in the back of the net against Chicago. Braces in the two matchups at home last year, one in the regular season, one in the postseason against Chicago. No goals today, came off the bench. But Kasule against Patrick Los puts it away. 1-1. One, one. Los, a good shot stopper in goal on penalties, made a few saves. Three of them, in fact. As we see again, Kasule, a bit of a slow run up before he puts that in the left corner. Now, Prueba. Scored two goals today. And he's preparing to take the second penalty for Chicago. Again, Rakowski gets a hand to a penalty, but he can't keep it out. Enough power, enough height from Pereba, and he makes the penalty. Julian Hall, the 16-year-old. He had a penalty against New York City FC in the Open Cup to try and make things 3-3 in regulation. It was saved. His next penalty to try and make it 2-2 in our shootout today. Hall buries it. A fantastic penalty. No nonsense from him. Perfect so far from our takers. He embraces with Rutkowski. Just an unsavable penalty. You take the risk when you lift it off the ground, you have to get your technique right. And he got it nearly perfect. Christian Kofi, very involved in today's match. Led the line, played off the left, has the third penalty, stutters, and calmly dispatches that one. Second look. It's Kofi waiting for just an inkling of where the keeper was heading and placed it past him. Afori. Second take for New York. Slides it home. His first league appearance of the season. Makes things 3-3. Nofori 
Put in that one on the left-hand side. And now another player heavily in involved in play so far, Omari Glasgow. Has one goal this year. Has 11 across three seasons in next pro. That one's dragged wide. Glasgow in Chicago blink first. They miss the penalty. And now potential advantage. Let's see it again. Glasgow tried to bury it in that bottom left corner and he put it just wide. Rafael Mosquera, the 18 year old Panamanian, the chance to try and give his side the advantage. Moves from left to right. With his left foot, he dispatches it. 4-3, New York. One save, one make away from an extra point for New York Red Bulls, too. Now Lamont Rochester. Played on the left wing, left wing back roll today. He has to score, and he has to hope for a save. Rochester, he buries it, he, excuse me, skies it. They conceded a four goal lead. They'll go home with two points. Bittersweet now for New York Red Bulls too. An utterly chaotic day, and it finishes with a final score 5 5, and the shootout heads the way of New York 4 to 3. Utterly chaotic. And we can look now back at our man of the match on today. Scored the first four goals of our match. Had four entering today, had four more on the day. Rolled Mitchell made things off to a brilliant start. Four goals in the first half makes him our Adidas man of the match. Good Lord, what a day it was for him. Went off with injury, it's a very tough scene to end the day, but this is a crowning moment for either seed. Brings the ball into his control, sits down the defender, and just slides it into the open goal after stepping past the goalkeeper. A fantastic performance for New York Red Bulls, too. Up next for them at Philadelphia Union in the league. As for Chicago Fire, up next in the cup against Indy 11 at home. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Jack Edwards. Once again, our final score, New York 5, Chicago 5, New York winning 4-3 after shootout. Don't forget you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Have a great rest of your night. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.